and it sounds like one of the things you're bringing out there is uh, sounding unique is essential if you want to really put a stamp somewhere in history. It sounds like just like kind of like this art school cliche, but like if you try to make something like when you're recording something and, and you pull out a painting and you actually try to make it sound like that, it's going to change the way you record something completely. Like if it, it refocuses your brain away from just getting the right mic, uh, the right this, the right that, you know, and trying to make it sound as, as good as possible. But like, how do you reflect this kind of image and, and, and record something that sounds like that? Um, it's a, it's, it takes a, a maybe a little bit of, of practice to kind of refocus your brain because like you can say it like, oh, I want to do this, but you have to commit to it. Like you have to actually do it. I mean, and a lot of people kind of like get distracted by, you know, something else along the line. They, they forget the fact that like, you know, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this painting or whatever. That's, you know, bullshit, whatever. But like you like really do it, you know, like really go for it and, and try to make it sound like the painting is like a, is it like a tricky thing like obstacle and um it's really uh um gratifying to to um just focus in on that and just do it you know because i feel like yeah i feel like when you hear an a, like a joy division record i mean i think martin hannett is maybe one of my favorite pro producers ever i mean the way that his records sound i mean like even like a band like esg these Puerto Rican girls from New York, um, just incredible sound. I mean, it sounds so futuristic. I mean, the album could come out today and it would, it would sound just as futuristic as it did when it came in the, came out in the eighties. Um, but like he really, it, fe it felt like he was painting a picture. It, it doesn't feel like he's, rec he's just recording something, not even, I mean, not even close. It's like, it's so uniquely designed and it's such an amazing world that that he's creating uh, and so really we, inspiring and so when you're talking about this painting practice this is some is this something you actually do when you're producing a record you're like we're going to make it sound like that yeah i was working with an artist recently and we went before i recorded a note of the music um he had uh played me all the songs and they were on acoustic guitar and um I took him to a museum and, and for three days before we ever recorded anything, we just walked through museums and I said, just pick paintings that remind you of each of the songs, you know? And it was like a, you know, not a fast process because you need, you need to kind of hunt for the feeling, you know? Yeah. And then we'd end up in front of a painting. He goes, this is it. This is this song. This is what it feels like to me. And it, and it felt like I was connecting to the music in a different way. Cause you know, you hear a song on an acoustic guitar, it means something to you, but that's not necessarily what the artist is trying to tell you sonically. You know, I might have, I might project some kind of idea on a song um, as, as far as the production that isn't in symmetry with what the artist was saying, you know? And so um, some of these paintings that he was picking were like, really um maybe more aggressive and darker and 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 more layers and kind of like and kind of browns and and things like that 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 i wouldn't have realized that the song felt i mean i could hear it in the lyrics but like it wasn't i, I don't know if i would have naturally maybe produced a song to having a feeling of that kind of thickness and darkness and like urgency um, if I had just, if I had just heard the song, but when you give me the painting that it's like, oh, you are really communicating something like pretty heavy. Like I knew it already, but I didn't realize how far this could go. And it completely changed my, um, the, it can, it changed the entire album, to be honest. I mean, every song, uh, it was just not what I would have done. The, the painting completely refocused my brain, you know? That's really it, um, encouraging to hear as well because it's you don't, you're not bringing a process to every record and going, here's how I do the thing. You're, you're trying to explore a different space every time you make a new record. Yeah, I would go insane. I mean, the, the thing that I think is the most insane thing 
is when you go to a studio and someone has the mic set up <laughs> and they have always had them set up like that. You know, like, oh, does the drums sound good there? That's their, their mic and they're good. I mean, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a crazy way to record to me. I mean, that is like... That is the opposite of a, what I want to be doing. I, the, I mean, I think every single time you record a drum set, you should tear it down and then redo a new, a new thing. I mean, you should not. Uh, it's a, that, that to me is not um, record making. That's just that's um, that's record that's preserving uh, a you know a moment in time. I mean, you could do that with your iPhone.